إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوضا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله Indeed, the most truthful of speech and the best of words are the words in the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَخَيْرُ الْهَدِي هَدِي مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ And the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ And the best of mankind. وَشَرُ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا And the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of us. وَكُلُّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَانٍ Everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation. وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ And every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. ثُمَّ أَمَّا بَعْدٍ My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, over the past couple of weeks and continuing today, we're feeding ourselves with questions that were posed at the end of a book in a chapter called The Islamic Day or The Islamic Life. Questions we should, if we want to be Muslims, if we want to be believers, if we want to be under the banner of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Yom Al-Qiyamah, then we should question ourselves with these things. And these are reminders that we should obviously, yani they should be at the forefront, forefront of our brains. But so often do we forget, and Allah said, وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الْفِكْرَةَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Remind one another, because reminding one another benefits the believers. Thabit ibn Hajjaj, he said, قَالَ عُمْرًا مِنْ خَطَّابِ رَبِّ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ حَاسِبُوا أَنْفُسُكُمْ قَبْلَ أَنْ تَحَاسَبُوا وَزَنُوا أَنْفُسُكُمْ قَبْلَ أَنْ تُوزَنُوا فَإِنَّهُ أَهْوَنَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الْحِسَابِ غَدًا أَنْ تُحَاسِبُ أَنْفُسُكُمْ الْيَوْمِ In this authentic narration, Thabit ibn Hajjaj, he said, Umar ibn Khattab, رضي الله عنه, he said, hold yourselves accountable before you're held accountable. Evaluate yourselves before your evaluation, يعني from Allah, from your Creator. For the reckoning will be easier on you tomorrow, on that يوم القيامة, if you question and you reckon yourself and you evaluate yourself today. So at the end of this book on the grave, these questions were posed. For the one who seeks the pleasure of his Lord in this life and the next, who seeks to have a better time and a nice time, an enjoyable time, a safe haven in his grave, who looks for shade and protection, yom al qiyamah, and who wants to make it to al-jannah, who wants to make it to paradise with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So reflect and focus on these. The comprehensive reminder to question yourselves daily. From the last of the questions came, هَلْ ذَكَرْتَ الثَّارَ الصَّبَاحِ وَالْمَسَاءِ Have you remembered the afkar, the remembrances of the morning and the evening? These are gems, they're pearls, they're diamonds that we've been given. To say in the morning before the sunrise, or after if you don't make it, before sun sets, or after if you don't get to it before it sets, to remember Allah and praise Him. You want protection from harm, from shayateen, from devils, from the jinn, from hasad, from envy, from na'im, from the evil eye, from sihir, from the black magic of 
shit that the people engage in. It is in these adhkar, these remembrances of the morning and the evening. Allah's met, Allah Azza wa Jal, He said, وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ فِي نَفْسِكَ تَضَرْعًا وَخِيفَةً وَدُونَ الْجَهْلِ مِنَ الْقَوْلِ بِالْغَدُوِّ وَالْآصَالِ وَلَا تَكُمْ مِنَ الْغَافِلِينَ Allah says what means, and remember your Lord by your tongue and within yourself, humbly and without and with fear, without being loud, in words in the mornings and in the afternoons, and be not of those who are neglectful and heedless. Meaning the one who does not do these adhkar in the morning and the evening, they are trending towards being of the ghafileen, the ones who are heedless. The ones who do not pay any any يعني, mindset to what is beneficial, the ones who are neglectful. عن أنس بن مالك رضي الله عنهما قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لأن أقعد مع قوم يذكرون الله تعالى من صلاة الغداة حتى تطلع الشمس أحب إلي من أن أعتق أربعة من ولد إسماعيل ولأن أقعد مع قوم يذكرون الله من صلاة العصر إلى إلى أن تغرب الشمس أحب إلي من أن أعتق أربعة. In this hadith, Sheikh Al Dani Hassanu he read it as Hassan in the Sunnah of Abi Dawood. The Prophet صلى الله عليه he said that I sit in the company of people who remember Allah. The exalted after the morning prayer until the sun rises is more dear to me than if I were to free four slaves and emancipate them. And this was something that was very grand because you see this being the penalty for someone who has to really pay something forward when they committed a wrong action. So freeing a slave of, is of course such a, a great and noble thing. Four of them that you were to it'd be better more dear to the Prophet than freeing four, four slaves, that you were to sit amongst people who remember Allah after Fajr until the sun rises, and after Asr until the sun sets. These afghar, have you done them? Or is it again, right after Fajr, go, you gotta get running, you gotta go make your money, you gotta get to your livelihood. After Asr, same things. It's time now, I have my hard day at work, it's time to go entertain myself, and be amongst my family. And we neglect these adhkar that were meant for us to get closer to our Lord and earn His protection. You want to protect yourself from the evils of this dunya, then you implement the adhkar in the morning and the evening. هَلَ اسْتَغْفَرْتَ اللَّهَ الْيَوْمْ مِنْ ذَنُوبِكَ Have you sought Allah's forgiveness for your sins today? Did you ask Allah to forgive you? Or do you just take it for granted that you will be forgiven? عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إني لا أستغفر الله وأتوب إليه في اليوم مئة مرة. The Messenger of Allah, خير الناس, the best of mankind, the one promised to be in the highest of Jannah and Paradise. He said, indeed, I, in my day, seek the forgiveness of Allah and repent to Him one hundred times. And what about us? who are following our desires and our whims, choosing darkness over light, choosing those desires over ta'a, over obedience. We sin and we sin and we sin, yet astaghfirullah, and they come out once or twice. The Messenger saw them a hundred times in the day, astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayhi. Wa an Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhumah qal, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم or he was seen to have in one, in one jalsa say a hundred times رب اخفرني وطب عليا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم that he would say my lord forgive me and pardon me thou art pardoning and forgiving and you are the pardoning and forgiving one one hundred times he would say them in a sitting and the companions would see him and witness him doing this have you asked Allah to forgive you for your sins today هل سألت الله الشهادة بصدق فإن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من سأل الله الشهادة بصدق بلغه الله منازل الشهداء وإن مات على فراشه رواه مسلم وغيره. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said in the authentic hadith whoever sincerely asks Allah to die as a shaheed as a martyr Allah will give him the status of the shaheed of the martyr even if he dies on his mattress even if he dies on his bed. So is this something that you ask Allah sincerely for? We, there may come that time 
When we have to defend our deen, or defend our homes, with what is legislated in the way that it is legislated, with what is just and what is correct, would you be, do you ask Allah to die as a martyr, so you can be given the status of the shuhada of the martyrs? Have you done so? هل اشتريت كتابا اسلاميا جديدا تتفقه منه في دينك؟ Have you bought a new Islamic book that will give you understanding in your deen? We have a bookcase here where we get authentic books on different topics. قصص الانبياء, كتاب الكبائر, the stories of the prophets, the, 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 the book of the major sins. And Lu'lu al Marjan, if it's still there, the Quran, the Noble Quran with its meaning in English, with some hadith, so we get some tafsir. Many, many other books present there. The explanation of the everyday ma- matters and manners that the Muslims should have and know. Have you bought something that we spend so much money on entertainment, so much money on food, so much money on things that will not bring us benefit to the Akhirah? Have you bought just one book a year? Forget the day. Just for one year, you buy a book that you will read through and learn your deen from. قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ مَنْ يُرَضَ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرٌ يَفْقِهُهُ فِي الدِّينِ The Prophet ﷺ said in the Hadith, if Allah wants good for you, then He gives you understanding of the deen. How can you get that understanding if you're not seeking the knowledge? So when قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ طَلَبُ الْعِلْمِ فَرِيدَةٌ عَلَى كُلِّ مُسْلِمٍ he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the seeking of knowledge is a faridah. It is an obligation. It is not something you can say, I'll do or I won't do. It is an obligation upon every Muslim male and female. What have you done to learn your deen? Do you think it would be sufficient to just face Allah and say, well, I knew it was out there, but I, I didn't get to it. It's not going to work that way. Seek knowledge of your deen. عن جابر رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سر الله علما نافعا وتعوذ بالله من علم لا ينفع رواه ابن ماجه وهذا حديث حسن the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said ask Allah for beneficial knowledge and seek refuge refuge with Allah from knowledge which does not benefit what have you done to learn your deen to learn the meaning of the Quran to learn the Sunnah of the best of mankind Weekly, daily, I'm getting calls, messages with questions that are should be from the basics. People being told that they should be doing X, Y, and Z, and it has nothing to do with the Sunnah of the Prophet. It's all innovation, it's all bidah. Lack of knowledge in the deen. Seek knowledge of your of your deen, of your Lord. Come to the halaqat on Sunday evenings. The ones we have on the Sunday mornings once a month, the family nights, learn your deen. But be mindful where you take your deen from. Have you asked Allah to forgive the believing men and the believing women, the believers, the mu'mineen and the mu'minat, the believing men and the believing women? Because if you do so, then you get a hasana, a reward for every believing man and every believing woman. Not just one hasana for making dua for the ummah. Look at about ways to make your scales heavy. Because this deen is about nafsi, nafsi. This deen is not about myself, myself, maslahati, maslahati. My well-being, my well-being. A'ilati, a'ilati, my family, my family. Mali, mali, my wealth, my wealth. This is not what Islam is about. This is a brotherhood and a sisterhood. This is why the Prophet said, That none of you will truly and completely believe till he loves for his brother and sister in Islam what he or she loves for themselves. Have you asked Allah to forgive the believing men and the believing women? Let the Ummah be like one of your own children. Let the Ummah be like one of your parents. Let them be constantly in your dua. And in your supplications. هل تجنبت التكبر والاعتزاز بنفسك? Have you tried to avoid self-pride and boasting? Because it's easy to in this life. Because you may get something that other people don't have. 
You may have been given some opportunity that other people weren't given. And by that, you look at yourself as if you worked hard. Or you did something special to earn some type of place on a pedestal. And you haven't done that. This is a test from Allah. Azza wa Jal. And Abdullah radiallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من كبر ولا يدخل النار من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من إيمان قال فقال له رجل إنه يعجبني أن يكون ثوبي حسنا ونعلي حسنا قال إن الله يحب الجمال في رواية إن الله جميل يحب الجمال إن الله يحب الجمال ولكن الكبر من بطر الحق وغمط الناس رواه الترمذي وهذا حديث حسن صحيح the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said whoever has a speck of pride a ذرة this is not even like an ant it's the tiny ant that you have to squint your eyes to see an atom these things flowing floating in the air when you see the sunbeams going through something that doesn't even weigh anything if it's in your hand you wouldn't know if it fell on your head or your shoulders if you have that much amount of pride or arrogance, seeing yourself as someone above others, then this person will not enter Jannah. And if you have that much iman, faith and belief in Allah and His angels and His books and His messengers and the last day and the qadr, the decree and the pre-decree of Allah, and you put the iman into action with the actions of your limbs, the salah, the zakah, the hajj, the siyam, etc., then this person will not enter the fire. So a man said to him, I like that my clothes be nice. And I like that my shoes or my sandals be nice. So Allah said to him, indeed Allah loves beauty. In one narration, it says, indeed Allah is beautiful and He loves beauty. So just having some nice clothes or wearing something nice, or some nice shoes and wearing something nice, or having some things that are nice, does not enter you into this category of being proud or arrogant. He said, indeed Allah loves beauty, but pride, arrogance, is refusing the truth. When someone gives you that ayah, when someone gives you that yani, verse of Allah, when someone gives you that hadith, when someone gives you some proof from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Wasallam, when someone tells you how the Sahaba lived, etc., and you still deny it, this is kibbutz, this is arrogance, this is pride. And when you look down on the people, then this is kibbut, arrogance and pride. So if you have that nice clothing, but you look down on the one who's disheveled, if you have those nice shoes, but you look down on the one who has a hole in his shoe, if you have those nice things, but you look down on others, then you have arrogance and pride, and you must seek refuge with Allah from it. Because it will destroy you and your good deeds and not bring you any benefit, Yom al In fact, the one who's so proud and so arrogant, he will be made to be the smallest ant's form. Yom al and when the people are running Yom al in fear, they will trample and stampede over that little ant. He puffed himself up in this life, but Allah made him the most insignificant thing, Yom al Have you tried to avoid self-boasting and pride? Self-pride and boasting, arrogance. Stay away from those things. You're a nobody. I'm a nobody. None of us are anybody until Allah says, Udkhul ila jannah. When you have two feet in jannah, then you can relax. Then you can pat yourself on the back. But until then, do not put yourself above anybody else, nor look down upon any others. What you've been given may be a source of your failure and misery and path to jannah. To jannah. And what others may be withheld from may be the source of them entering jannah. Always be aware of this. Have you visited your brother or sister for the sake of Allah? For the sisters to visit the sisters, the brothers to visit the brothers. Of course, for the mahram, for the mahram, to visit the mahram, opposite gender. Yani, of course, a brother to visit his sister or a sister to visit his brother. A blood relation, of course, this is good. And Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qal, qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إذا عاد الرجل أخاه أو زاره قال الله له طبت وطاب من شاك وتبوأت منزلا في الجنة 
Sheikh Al Albani he authenticated this hadith as Hasan it's in the Adab Al Mufrad, the Book of Manners for Imam Al Bukhari. The Prophet Sallallahu he said, when a man visits his sick brother, Allah tells him, you have been good, and your evening will be good, and you can take your place in the garden, in the gardens of paradise. Ali radiallahu anhu, he narrated, he said, سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول من أتى أخاه المسلم عائدا مشى في خرافة الجنة حتى يجلس فإذا جلس غمرته الرحمة فإن كان غدوة صلى عليه سبعون ألف ملك حتى يمسي وإن كان مساء صلى عليه سبعون ألف ملك حتى يصبح this hadith, which is Hassan in the Sunnah of Ibn Majah, the Prophet وسلم, he said, whoever comes to his Muslim brother and visits him when he is sick, he is walking amongst the harvest of paradise of Jannah until he sits down. And when he sits down, he is covered by mercy. And then, if this is in the morning, 70,000 angels make dua and send blessings upon him until the evening. And if he goes and he does this visitation in the evening, 70,000 angel, 70, angels make dua and supplicate and send blessings upon him until the morning. Just for doing what is in, in hukuk al-Muslim al-Muslim, from the rights of the Muslim upon the Muslim. From them to visit them when they're ill and sick, to make for that, uh, dua for them. La ba'sa tahur and insha'Allah, remind them that this may be a purification for them. To ask Allah, the Lord of the Magnificent Throne, to cure them. As Allah, the Alim, Rabbul Arsh, the Alim, and Yashiyat, go and make that dua, give them some comfort and some peace. Remind them about Allah and to seek forgiveness and to repent. For you to do so, look at the reward 70,000 angels mentioning their, your name on their tongue, sending blessings upon you. هل دعوت إلى الله أهلك وإخوانك وجيرانك ومن تتصل بهم؟ Have you called your brothers, your neighbors, those connected with them to the path of Allah? My brothers and sisters in Islam, especially if we choose to remain in a non-Muslim country, then da'wa is of the highest of duties that we've been called to do. But you must get some knowledge first. And if you don't have that, then your character, your good manners, your kindness should be a walking form of da'wah. But we have left da'wah because we want to be politically correct. We have left da'wah calling others to Islam because of yeah, not wanting to offend somebody. Sometimes it's our mothers or our fathers, our brothers, our sisters. This da'wah is not just for the non-Muslim to become Muslim, but it's to the Muslim who's Lagging, lagging on his salah, on his paying of zakat, on his fasting Ramadan, of doing good deeds. Right? Calling to the way of Allah. Have you done so for your brothers, your neighbors, those connected with them to the path of Allah? Allah says, Ud'u'na sabila rabbika bil hikmah, wal mawridat al hasana, wa jadilhum bil latihi ahsan, inna rabbaka huwa a'lamu biman dalla an sabilihi wa huwa a'lamu bil muhtadeen. Allah says it's a command. Invite, O mankind. Invite to the way of your Lord, to Islam, to Tawheed, to worshipping Allah alone with our partners, with wisdom. Use the Quran, use the Sunnah of the Prophet as your proofs and your evidences, and the fair preaching, and argue only in the way which is better. Do not raise your voices towards them, do not cuss, do not insult, do not belittle them or make fun of them, or mock them, because in turn they will do so towards Allah and His Messenger and Islam Truly your Lord knows best who has gone astray from His path, and He is best aware of those who are guided. Call to the way of Allah. وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةً لِدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْعُوثِ وَيَنْهَنَا عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمَ الْمُفْتِحُونَ Allah said, let there arise from you a group. Who's that group going to be? Who's going to stand up and sacrifice? Let there arise from you a group out of the people, inviting to all that is good, to Islam and Tawheed, and joining what is good and correct. Tawheed, what is lawful, what is halal, what is 
given as orders by Islam and forbidding al-munkar, forbidding shirk, kufr, disbelief, polytheism, and all that Islam has forbidden, these are the ones who are successful. When you call to the way of Allah, call your neighbors, call your family members, call your friends. At work there's restrictions, we get it. You can't just go and start preaching there, you'll get fired and there's all these harassment things and all that. We get it. But even by your character, your kindness, your goodness, your, your, your uh, way of pardoning, forgiving, being gentle, this will emanate and the people may ask you, what is this person upon? Or what are you upon to make you like this? And if Allah guides them through Islam through you, this is better than you being gifted a red camel or a red Ferrari or whatever you think is such a valuable thing. That Allah guides someone to Islam through you is better than all of those things. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, three questions remain. One we will just address next جمعة بإذن الله فالله allows us to live to it. Which is, have you made dua to Allah عز وجل during the hours of 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 where Allah will accept the dua. There are specific times that we lose our own. Just because it's forecasted when it's raining, Allah accepts the dua. Yet many of us will squander it away sleeping or watching our phones or TV or whatever it may be. But we'll address that later. Those two points he ended this chapter of his book called The Islamic Life, The Islamic Day. Questions you should ask yourself and reckon yourself with. He said, هَلْ أَصَابَتْكَ مُصِبَّةٌ فَقُلْتْ إِنَّ لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّ لِلَّهِ رَجَعُونَ Did any affliction, trial, calamity, hardship, did anything happen to you? Even if it's something like you went to get a glass and it fell and it broke. Even if it's the, the lock on your, on your watch broke and so again, it doesn't lock anymore for it to brace your wrist. Even if you went to tie your shoes and your, your laces snapped. Right? Did anything happen to you of trial, difficulty, not something you were planning? And you said, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja'un. You said to Allah, we belong and to Him we return. So he's getting towards the end of this chapter. Questioning yourself, because in essence, this is what our life revolves around. To Allah we belong. He owns us. He owns everything we have with us. We're only alive by His permission. We will go back into the dirt He created us from. When we're done with this life, and then He will resurrect us again to be questioned and then admitted into our final destination. Do you say, Inna lillahi wa inna rajun, or do we cuss and swear and get mad and hit and go angry and throw a tantrum and we remember Allah hours later or days later or months later? Allah Azza wa Jal, He said, <coughs> وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرَ الصَّابِرِينَ Ayat we always remember, but we fail to remember them when it matters the most, when we need to apply them. But really, it's because we've only gone to say this when someone dies. But this was a statement, in لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّ لِلَّهِ رَجْعُونَ The Prophet was saying, for all matters, that weren't to his expectation or his liking. Allah said, and certainly we will test you with something of fear, hunger, loss of wealth, loss of lives, loved ones, loss of fruits. But give glad tidings to the sovereign, the patient ones. And the demon إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَتْهُمْ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Those who when they're afflicted with the calamity, right away, they say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajaun. Truly to Allah, to Allah we belong, and truly to Allah we shall return. Ulaika alim salawatu min rabbihim wa rahmah, wa ulaika hum muhtadun. They are those whom Allah, who there are salawat, blessings. Those who are blessed, and they will be forgiven from their Lord. And they are those who receive Allah's mercy, and it is they who are the ones who are rightly guided. Get this phrase wet on your tongue. You don't get the 
thing you wanted, the car you wanted, the home you wanted, the grades you wanted, whatever it may be, the job you wanted. In the Allah will blow it in your return. Get your tongue moist with this one. And he concluded this after beginning these questions with Salah. Now he prayed them in the Masajid, and he do the thought after the prayers, etc. He concluded them by saying, Al Da'ut al Yom, we had the dua, Allah mini Ya'udika and Ashrika Bika, wa ana aman wa stafirka min mala aman. Have you said in your day, every day, have you made the dua, Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you, lest I should commit shit knowingly, and I seek your forgiveness if I commit shit unknowingly. This is the opposite of Tawheed. In Allah la yakhru an yushrika bihi wa yakhru ma duna dhalik liman yasha. Allah says in the Quran what means that Allah will not forgive the sin of shirk. Unless you make tawbah. If you make tawbah, Allah will forgive it. If it's sincere and it's true and you leave off shirk and kufr and the likes of this. But any other sin, even if you do not make istighfar for it, even if you do not ask Allah to forgive you, Allah may still forgive you for it. But shirk, you will not be forgiven for unless you repent sincerely for it. We take for granted this tawheed. We take for granted that we're Muslims worshipping one Lord, one Creator, alone in truth, with no partner. Not even His messengers should receive a dua or a prayer or the likes of these matters. Yeah, and towards them. This is the beauty, this is the biggest of the ni'am, the biggest of the blessings and favors Allah could bestow on anybody. And we're saved from so much shit, from so much association of worship with Allah Azza wa Jal. Don't take it for granted. Ask Allah to always preserve us upon Tawheed and to save you from shit knowingly and unknowingly. اِقْرَأْ كِتَابَكْ كَفَى بِنَفْسِكَ الْيَوْمَ عَلَيْكَ حَسِيبًا It will be said to every one of us, read your book, you yourself are sufficient as a reckoner against you this day. There will be no other evidence. Our books will be given to us. Everything we said, everything we did, every good we did, every evil we did, it will be shown to us. There will be no other reason for anyone else to come and say, yeah, I saw him do it. No, no, he didn't really do this. It won't matter. It's all recorded. And it will all be a proof for us or against us on that day. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, these were some of the questions. I was going to review them all, but because of the time, yani, you can go to the past videos, uh, the past uh, recordings. But question yourself, where are you praying your prayers? Are you making your azkar after the prayers? Are you doing the similar ones? Question yourself, do I remember Allah daily, Yom of Qiyamah? The mizan, a scale that will come out and weigh my deeds, a bridge over Jahannam, a day of resurrection where people will flee from everyone they love, throw their own mother and father and children in a fire to save themselves. Do I stay away from evil gatherings? Do I try to stop excessive laughter? Do I try and avoid self-pride and arrogance and boasting? Am I, have I been dutiful and good to my parents? Question yourselves with these things. Have I made dua to the believing men and women? Do I ask Allah for Jannah in the day three times and to be saved from the hellfire three times? Have I given in charity? Have I made dua to Allah during the hours of response? And I thank Allah <coughs> for being led and guided to Islam. Have I thanked Allah for my hearing and my eyesight and my, my limbs and the functioning of all my body parts? Question yourselves with these things. So that you live as a Muslim and you will be a mu'min on the Qiyam. So you'll be a believer on the day of resurrection. Just a couple of quick announcements, inshaAllah, very, very fast, Barakallahu Every Jum'ah, I get complaints, especially from the sister side. Alhamdulillah, may Allah reward them. They're coming to the masajid even though they don't have to, to learn. But there are sisters who talk during Jum'ah. Or do adhkar or tasbih during Jum'ah out loud. And it distracts those coming to learn. From the brothers, I've seen it with my own eyes and I've said it more than I guarantee any other imam across the, the country. To not talk during the khutbah. To put away your phones. You can't give salams to your brother. Even if he reaches his hand out. Even if he says it. If he sneezes, you don't respond to him during the khutbah. You're supposed to listen to the imam whatever message you're in. 
Because the Prophet said, من نسل, من نسل لغة, لغة Whoever even is just rubbing the carpet in front of him, not focusing on the Imam and his khutbah and his words as reminders, then he has committed lahu, and whoever commits lahu during Jum'ah, he has no Jum'ah for him. And for the sisters who come, she'll have no Jum'ah for her. This is the time to say, forget that dunya, everything wrong. If you can't control yourself, leave your phone in the car. If you can't control yourself, sit where no one you know will see you, or can see you, or where somebody else is sitting. Do not lose your Jum'ah. Just because you can't wait till after 30 minutes to give salam or respond to a salam to somebody. Even saying unsut is level. Even saying be quiet to them is level. So you tempt some people to say that because they just want to listen and learn their deen and someone's just coming to socialize. Stay home. If that's the case for the sisters. The brothers, you have to come to Jum'ah. It is a must, it is an obligation. You miss three in a row, Allah seals your heart according to the hadith. Don't blow it because you can't give up a half an hour and there's a hundred and whatever hours, 68 hours in the whole week. And this is all you've been asked by Allah to give up. To come and listen and not have to focus or look at your phone or talk to somebody. So that's number one announcement. Number two, if you come after the second rukur in Jum'ah, you come after the Imam for the second time, he says, You can still join the prayer, but you've officially missed Jum'ah, and you must pray as Dhuhr for Raka'at. Because some, even during the prayer, sometimes we make them out, we know the difficulty with parking and people getting here, they still, yeah, I mean, they come in after the second rukur and they still just pray the two rakats as if it's Jum'ah. According to the Sunnah of the Prophet you've missed Jum'ah officially, you pray at Salat al Dhuhr, may Allah ease your conditions and give you strength and, and forgive you for any shortcomings and allow you to try and get here soon. We have a living Islam this uh, session this Sunday. It's been growing in size. We have donuts and muffins and juice and tea and stuff Sunday morning in the social hall. It's not Sunday, about once a month. Beautiful reminders of everything we need to know about our deen. We're concluding, we're in Arkan al Iman. We're concluding the pillars of al Iman of belief and faith. And family night, save the date, is Saturday, January 20th. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الاحياء منهم والاموات انك انت سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين وانصرنا على اعدائك واعداء الدين اللهم انصر اخواننا واخواتنا في فلسطين اللهم نفس قلوبهم وسهل امورهم وثبت اقدامهم وارحم موتاهم واشف مرضاهم وتقبل شهداءهم يا رب العالمين سبحان ربك رب العزه اما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين